All right, part three of the overhaul video. I didn't think there was going to be a part three, but here we are. So this clock had a very irregular amplitude. It would vary by 30, 40 degrees a day. Part of what you're doing when you're regulating the clock is you should check the amplitude every day just to make sure that you're on course. So I knew that the clock was already mishandled. I have some photographs from the eBay seller when I first bought it and he had it underneath his arm in the unlocked position. So I know it's, it had a rough life. So what do we do? Everything else is working great. We gotta take hands off, dial off, um, everything apart to get to the main suspend or the suspension spring. Replace the suspension spring. These things only last for uh, maybe 50 or 60 years. We're at the 50 year mark with this clock. So the OEM suspension spring is about two one thousandths of a inch thick. It um, has high tensile strength, but it has a service life. Think of it like, like this belt, and it's gonna twist like this, 360 degrees, 540 degrees. It's gonna, has to have the strength to come back in the other direction, including the weight of the balance underneath it, and same thing, 360 degrees, 540 degrees, whatever it ends up being. And it does this twice a minute, 24 seven. So they have a finite life. They're only gonna last for so long. I replaced the suspension spring on this with a non OEM spring. That spring is a little bit thicker than the OEM spring. And then that throws in a whole bunch of other issues too, because now it's going to be running too fast. Thicker springs will run faster than thinner springs. So I had to add, I believe, three grams of weight to each side to take us from being too fast by 17 minutes a day to, um, I think it was just a couple of minutes. After that, you can do your regulation by moving the lever on the top and then kind of cheating it by rotating that little castle nut on the top also and get yourself close. It's a, it's a long process. It's gonna all be explained in the video. However, now, if you want, you can, as I'm talking, you can count the motifs going past me. And this clock is running at 600 degree amplitude and has been running perfectly. The amplitude hasn't changed one bit for about, I think three weeks or so since I've been regulating it. It's running about a minute a day or a minute a month fast. It's done. I'm not doing anything else with this clock. It's perfect. So um, if you are going to change out your suspension spring, just know that there are watchmakers or clock makers out there who have gone through five springs before they finally got it right. It's very difficult to install. It's um, Everything is very small, very delicate. Uh, so buy get the right equipment, the right kind of tweezers, buy a lot of them, practice with the old suspension spring when you take it out, try to reinsert it into the upper clamp. That's where you're gonna have your problems is the upper clamp. And um, good luck because uh, if you do get that suspension spring working properly, you're, you should be good for another 50 years. I don't know how long these aftermarket springs last, but hopefully they last um, at least as long as the ones that were built 50 years ago. So. Enjoy the video. It's gonna show you how to um, install your suspension spring and do your regulation, your weights, everything that you're gonna need to know. So um, I wish you luck. If you don't want to do your own suspension spring, send me an email and we'll figure something out. Maybe I can put it in for you or just have me overhaul your clock. So enjoy. Before removing your suspension spring, ensure that the balance is in the locked position. I have already removed the glass from the case. I store it over here. I wrap it in rubber bands, and then that way, all the glass stays intact. I can just pull this entire clock out of the glass case. I have also removed the, the hands. I've removed the dial and the dial pan. I have removed the bellow, and I have also removed the movement. Of course, we want to make sure that we have no energy left on the clock. So right now we're almost down to bare bones. Next step is going to be removing, let's get you in a better position here. We're going to loosen this screw about one and a half rotations. And we're going to take loosen the regulator screw 
Let's see, I think you can see that. Maybe not. There it is. We're gonna loosen that screw in here about one, one and a half rotations. And then we are going to pull this pin out. What I'm doing now is loosening the four screws that are holding the frame onto the base. I've already taken those screws out. I'm just leaning this over a table and I'm going to get these remaining screws out. The balance is still in the locked position. Okay, there's one. There's two. All right, I am going to reach to the other side. Let's back, let's move everything over this way so you can see easier. I'm going to release the balance and we should be able to lift everything out. Okay, this just came right through the frame. And there we have it. The next thing we're going to do is remove this nut. Now they make a special tool that fits in here to spin it off, but you can also press a dime in here and just use a pair of wire clines or a wrench. And once you loosen that with a wrench, the rest of it comes off pretty easy. Okay, and then there is another screw here that we're going to need to remove. Now is a good time to make sure that your roller is nice and clean. I'm spinning it around using a little bit of one dip on a Q-tip and just going up and down and getting a nice polish on it. Okay, you also wanna make sure that the roller moves nice and freely. Next, I'm gonna remove these components from the suspension spring. I'm just making a note that they're approximately 106 millimeters apart. This is the regulator clamp and it should just pull right off of the suspension spring. There we are. This is the bottom regulator clamp, and what I need to do is tap the razor blade into the edge of the regulator clamp and just create a gap large enough to remove the suspension spring and there it just fell right out. We're going to leave this set up just like that. I'm going to practice inserting the suspension spring into there's a little brass centering device 
And what I'm going to do is just take my old spring and I'm going to lay it on a side. I'm going to have to probably refocus. We're using a lot of magnification, but I got it started inside of this sleeve. All right, let me try to find you. Here you are. Okay, let's uh, get this focused. And now I'm going to try to push the suspension string through. So I found a point of resistance. When you find that point of resistance, grab your spring and just gently, just a few millimeters away, just begin pressing. Okay, there we can see it's coming through the other end. We want to pull this through until we have a couple of inches. There you have it. Make sure you pull all the way through. We started off on this end, and I pulled all the way through, so our tapered part is facing this way. Okay, next we're going to install this. And we're gonna put it, we're gonna put the spring back in here and try to get it as straight coming out of this part as possible and try to get it perfectly centered on that um, opening right here too. Kind of go in there like that. Okay, I think we achieved what we wanted to. I took the razor blade off. I just gently rotate the razor blade off and as you can see, our spring is nice and straight and just about almost perfectly in the center. So looks great. Now we're gonna fish this through the balance tube. What I did was I held the tube vertical, this end up, and I just let this fall through the tube all the way through. And then as I was tightening, I rotated the tube onto the screw, not the screw, not screwing the tube or the screw into the tube. That way I'm not twisting the suspension spring. I'm just rotating the tube gently while it's vertical and then I tighten this up with a screwdriver. Next we're going to install the rest of the balance and we're going to talk a little bit about the weights. These are all of the weights that were on the right side of the balance. It doesn't make a difference, right side or left side. They're 17 grams. These are 1.5 millimeter thick weights. And that 1.5 millimeter thick weight is going to weigh in at approximately three grams. Now, this will, when you add the weight to your balance, it's going to uh, slow down your movement by approximately 15 minutes a day. Now, we have changed the thickness of the balance. It's a little bit thicker than the OEM, so we may have to add weights to slow the movement down. It may um, rotate too quickly. Let's see if the weights on the left side are approximately 17 grams as well. 17, exactly. Okay, so um, we're gonna go ahead and begin our reassembly. This clamp will need to be slid down into the top of the balance, and then we're going to insert it from the bottom and fish our suspension spring through the top. I have used some postcards to push the balance, that's that lower disc, on the balance is now pushed up against the bottom of that locking plate. I lost quite a bit of my suspension spring because I created a little kink as I was fishing it through. Fortunately, I have a little bit sticking out so that my hope is that I can hold this suspension spring with tweezers while I drive in the locking pin and Hopefully when I tap the pin down, I can push the rest of this balance down just a little bit. A little bit of work has been completed since our last video. 
So what I did was I held the suspension spring with tweezers as I drove the pin down. And what that did was it let the balance come down just a little bit. You wanna, and right now it's working perfectly. So I have installed the frame back onto the base. I've tightened the four screws. I have tightened the screw up here that presses the pin against the suspension spring. And then that screw that we loosened up in here, that's snugging up the, um, that little, uh, that little um, device that we slid onto the suspension spring. So that's nice and snug. What I did not snug up yet is this screw. Okay, so right now I'm testing the balance. I rotated it 180 degrees and released it. Everything is level. Of course, the balance is released. And if this swings for about 30 to 45 minutes, that tells me we have a good suspension spring. Nothing was damaged during the install. So far, it's been running for, I believe, 26 minutes, and I'm still getting about, it looks like it's, almost 360 degree rotation. And I only rotated it 180 degrees and then I let it go. So I think we have a successful spring install. Once this balance stops moving, I'll go ahead and poise the impulse roller over here. And we wanna make sure that that's facing straight this way. It could take, um, before this balance completely stops rotating, that could be until tomorrow morning. It usually takes a, a long time for these to stop moving. All right, I think we can put this one to bed. This pendulum has been rotating for one hour. When I timed it at the 30 minute mark, it had 400 degrees of rotation, and now it has 330 degrees of rotation. So it is losing just a little bit of energy in the, in the 30 minutes. Uh, one other thing that I did while I had everything apart was the lacquer on the top of the balance was uh, beginning to come off in certain areas. So I did uh, take the lacquer down and respray lacquer before assembly. And right now it looks like a, a brand new clock. So the balance was rotated 180 degrees approximately 15 hours ago. And it's still just gently moving. But what I've noticed is this part of the motif is going to end up being our center point. It's actually gonna be just the edge of this motif, right exactly where my peg wood is at. It's still gently rocking to the left and to the right, but this does appear to be the center. So I'm gonna lock the balance in place and center the impulse roller as best I can. The impulse roller is perfectly centered. I'm going to gently pull down on this ring to give this spring just a little bit of tension and then I'm going to tighten this screw. Our balance is almost perfectly centered in the frame. That's This is the right side. This is the front. We're looking at that annular space between the balance and the frame. See how we're the same all the way around. So we are just about perfectly plumb and level. So what I did then was made an adjustment on the three screws at the bottom of the base and they're push-pull screws. You can push on one, pull on the other two. And we have our bubble is perfectly centered. So now when we go to set this up, we can really just use the bubble and get really close to being perfectly plumb and level. Last thing I'm going to look at is the spacing between the balance tube and the pendulum and how it lays between uh, the base. So that middle bar is the base. And as you can see, we're pretty close to being right in the middle of where we need to be. So we have a, a very free moving balance. And remember, everything is in spec because we made our adjustments to this regulator earlier and 
we are set right in the middle. So hopefully once we get everything assembled, we're pretty close to where we need to be. When I had the uh, drum installed on the clock, I noticed that the Swiss was over to the side. So we're gonna try to get that recentered. And I think what I need to do is rotate this plate that way to get things straightened out. So I'm gonna put an ice cube on the bellow and it's already starting to go down. So I'm just gonna give this a little, I'm gonna press down and turn it. There we go, just a little bit to the right and we should be good to go. As you can see, we're off quite a bit. We have this little flange here, this little flange here. So centering the plate on the drum doesn't really work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna put some index marks here for the next guy who comes along and takes this off just so that he can see, um, he can get everything lined up before. And we're gonna put a T here that indicates this is the top. So next time someone goes to take this off, they'll put it back on nice and straight. These are washers that are installed on the pendulum to act as weights. So when we put in our new suspension spring, we've changed the geometry of the entire clock. It's changed a lot of things. The, uh, where the impulse roller interacts with the fork has been changed. I needed to make a small adjustment there. This new spring is a little bit thicker than the OEM spring. When springs are thicker, they tend to make the clock run fast. This clock was running approximately 17 minutes a day fast, faster with the new spring. So I started off adding um, one washer to over each screw and I ran it for a day. It allowed the clock to run about 10 minutes slower. So I thought, okay, We'll add two. Two of these washers come out to about 3.5 grams. And I'm gonna watch this for a couple of days, see how close we are. We want to get as close as possible to being accurately timed without having to regulate the clock with the lever on top of the clock. Once I know which weights are going to work properly, I will order the proper weights. You can order them, they can be 1.5 millimeters thick, one millimeter, two millimeter, it depends. I have a feeling that we're going to end up using a 1.5 millimeter thick counterweight for the balance, which comes out to, it'll probably come out to about three grams. So we're gonna let this run for a few days and monitor the time and see what we need to do next. The new weights came in and they're coming in at 3.16 grams, 3.16 grams, perfect. What we're going to do next is, I have the clock in a locked position. I'm going to remove this screw, install the weight, and then spin the pendulum around and install the other weight on the other side. The additional weights have been installed on the balance and it took a long time to get everything regulated to the point where I'm at now. I think I'm within just a couple of seconds a day, but I'm, I'll measure that in a few days. Okay, what we're looking at now is the amplitude. We have a, a clean movement. We have a nice clean clock. We have a new suspension spring. Each one of these motifs is 30 degrees apart. We're gonna start right there. That's gonna be zero. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, almost twenty. So that's approximately 600 degree amplitude. We really shouldn't be running any higher than 540 degree amplitude with these clocks, but 
If I add more weight, it's gonna slow down the clock a little bit too much. It's fine running at 600 degree amplitude. I'm gonna show you in just a second why high amplitude can be dangerous in an Atmos clock. This is another clock I'm servicing and I'm gonna to try to illustrate to you some of the dangers you can encounter when you're running too high of an amplitude, which is if, you're, if you have a nice clean clock, everything's running great, High amplitude is what it's all about. Uh, once you have high amplitude and low beat error, you have a clock that is very capable of keeping accurate time. Okay, so notice we're gonna grab that roller. Boom, the fork is pushing it, we're throwing it. Notice we're about a millimeter away from that banking pin, the same that we were on the left. This is the part I want you to pay attention to. Look how that roller is coming all the way around. About two millimeters short of hitting the fork. Okay, it's gonna come back. That's a nice, highly polished roller. Again, we're going to watch, look at the distance between that banking pin and the fork. We're gonna grab that fork, push it. Again, we are missing that banking pin by about another millimeter. This is a perfectly positioned fork. The roller's coming around, it's got 600 degree amplitude and it is almost going to impact the pallet fork and it does not. It will just repeat this process forever until the clock gets dirty. Once the clock gets a little bit more dirty, we'll see this amplitude begin to reduce. Look how nice this is working. What a beautiful movement. Here we go. Look at that. That roller's coming all the way almost back to the front of the clock. Now, if we want to have a clock or we have a clock that minimum amplitude is 360 degrees when we throw that roller right there is as far as you can throw it so if you are within specs no more than 360 degree amplitude this roller will get thrown like that it will stop right there and turn back okay this one's coming back around In a little bit, we're going to check the um, accuracy of this clock. The clock has been running for 168 hours or one week. We're going to see how well it's performing in that week. I know it's running a little fast and it should be moved. What we're gonna do is wait for the fork to move to the right position. It'll move this hand on the five minute mark and we'll see just how accurate the clock has been running and right there at 42. So the clock is running 18 seconds a week fast. So it's roughly about a minute, a little bit over a minute fast per month. I'm okay with that. Um, I can always back it down a little bit, get it a little bit closer, but as far as I'm concerned, this clock is running perfectly fine.